All right, our last big topic that we're going to cover in intermediate algebra is the Cartesian coordinate system. And we're going to spend a couple of days talking about the Cartesian coordinate system. And of course, we'll pick up on a lot more of the ideas that we've done in intermediate algebra as we move into college algebra. Um, to start with graphing lines, um, it's true that every two points lie on exactly one line. Therefore, when graphing a line, we really only need to plot two points and connect them. So can you plot more? Sure. Do you need to? No, not really. So we're going to work today on some different lines and plotting them. Um, if you want to use graph paper, um, I know that I have children that live in my home that really love graph paper. Um, I have students in one of my classes, they want to do all their math on graph paper. That's really expensive, by the way, because graph paper is a lot more expensive than notebook paper. But if you want to use graph paper for these next two sections, that might help you. Um, and if you don't want to go buy it, you can actually print it off actually from the internet too, gridded paper. Um, but if you don't want to use that, that's okay with me too. So I've got some graphs on mine already drawn in to help me um, when I'm presenting. Um, so we have several lines that we're going to plot. The first one is the line y equal negative 2x. So we need to plot a minimum, at least, and that's all we have to, plot two points. And you can actually pick what those two points are. So what I'm going to do on each one of mine is I'm going to make a table, an xy table. And I'm going to pick a value for x, figure out what its corresponding y value is. And I've talked to you before about the fact, I think in here, that zeros are lovely, okay? Picking zero for things is often a very nice choice, um, simplifies things on solving the rest of it. So I like to pick zero when I can. Um, so if x is equal to zero in this equation, what will y be? It's zero on this one. That doesn't always happen, but it did here. And then I'm gonna pick another value for x, and again, you don't need to make this hard. Please don't pick, you know, square root of 37. That's not going to be nice, right? One's a great value to pick, absolutely. So I'm liking ones too. So if we pick x is equal to 1, what's y? Negative 2. Okay, everybody good so far? And if you picked two different points, right, maybe 0 wasn't a nice pick point to pick, or maybe you just thought I like the number 3 or whatever, it's just fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So down on my grid or on your paper, draw yourself your, an, your own grid. You're going to plot those two points. So here's 0, 0. Actually, let me do it in red so it's more visibly different. There's my 0, 0. And I'm going to plot 1, negative 2. So remember, the x value comes first. Tells you whether you go positive or negative, left or right, right? And um, how far? So I'm going to go 1 to the right. And then my y value is negative 2, so I'm going to go down 2. So my point one negative two is about right there. Okay, if you have a straight edge with you, a folder, a calculator lid, your ID card, something like that, even the edge of a paper will help you to keep things nice and neat. Um, there's really no excuse not to make it nice and neat, so I expect that you will. And we're going to connect these two points. I need a thinner line. So, and you should really draw arrows on the end because the line would continue in both directions indefinitely. Do you mean when you stop drawing it? Yeah. It doesn't really. Um, so if you had wanted to, let me draw it. I mean, technically you could do like this and it would be right. It would be okay. It would look a little bit funny. So um, just because my grid itself happens to be a little bit bigger. But it doesn't matter at all, Haley. So this would be totally just fine. Okay, any questions on that one? Well, let's try another one then. So now you've got the equation y equals negative 3x plus 2. Again, I'm going to make an xy chart, and I need to pick a value for x. Zero is lovely. So 
So if I pick a value for x, I have negative 3 times 0 plus 2. You don't necessarily have to write that down for me, but if it helps you to see it, please do. What would my y value be? Two. It'll be 2. The negative 3 times 0 will 0 out, and I just have the plus 2 at the end, so this would be 2. Now we're going to change our x value to something else. 1. You guys are going to be just as exciting as I am. Zeros and ones all the way. It's all right. It works. So we're going to put a 1 in there for x. What's negative 3 times 1? Negative 3 plus the 2 would be negative 1, right? Yeah. Okay, so down on my graph, I'm going to plot 0, 2. So 0 means I don't go left or right any, and I go up 2. So that would be about right here on my graph. And then my other pair, negative 1, I'm sorry, 1, negative 1 would be right 1 and down 1. This would be about right there. And we're going to connect these two. Let's try that. Make mine a little thicker. Hopefully it's a little easier to see. And the arrows on the ends. Okay, everybody good? Okay. What makes number three different? It's a fraction in it. It's not as bad as it looks. All right, so it's still very friendly to choose x as zero, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So if x is zero here, I would have four-thirds. Actually, I'm going to write it above it. My grid's a little bit, or my, yeah, my grid's a little bit closer. So this is four-thirds times zero plus one. So the four-thirds times zero part zeroes out, and I get a y value of one. Now, it is probably not in your best interest to choose an x value of one. I wouldn't recommend it. Three would be nice. Kaylee, why did you choose three? Yeah, so it's really nice, since my denominator has a 3 in it, to multiply by 3, right? Because then the 3 in the denominator and the 3 that I've chosen are going to eliminate one another. They're going to multiply to, to 1. So I end up with only the 4 that's on top. You could have likewise chosen a negative 3, and it would have been just as nice. In fact, any multiple of 3 would have been nice, but 3 itself is the, probably the cleanest. So I have the 4 that's there times the 1 now. And then plus the one at the end, which gives me what? Whoops. Five. It does. It gives me five. So it's not that there's anything wrong with choosing a value of one. It's just that if you choose to use a number one for x here, you're going to choose to continue to deal with fractions throughout the rest of your problem. And you're going to have to plot with them too. So it's a nicer one here to use because I don't have to plot any fractions. I've got zero, one. So zero, one would be here. Okay, and then I have three five, so I go over right to, um, to three and up to five. Um, I think I'm there. Through to the right, up five. Um, if you're drawing these and you don't have any grid paper, you need to make grid marks for me, like at least along your axes. I don't need to see the drawn in, you know, X's and Y, like the whole grid. But if you were to be drawing this, you would actually at least plot out one, two, three. You'd mark out like that for me to let me know that you went over right three and up five. Okay? It should be very clear from what you have marked on there that you're at three, five by your markings. And you should do your best to try to make them look approximately equal, you know, so it doesn't look like something that's really not happening. Um, and then we're going to connect these two with our arrows on the end. How do things change when we look at number four? Yeah, they're on the same side, right? So if that really bothers you, you can move them. But the reality is you don't need to move them at all for what we're doing, OK? So I want to take a look at one with you where it looks like this. Here's x and here's y. And it's still very nice if you wish to choose x is equal to 0 or something like that. You can also, it hasn't been necessary or useful before on this particular problem, you could also choose the y. 
instead and figure out what x is. So I'm going to start on this one with choosing y is equal to 0. Um, so if I choose y is equal to 0 on this, what will x be? Somebody said 2. Yeah, it will be 2, right? This piece eliminates. It's not there anymore, so the x value itself will end up being 2. Now, it's actually really nice on this problem to choose another value for y instead of for x. Why is it more friendly here to choose values for y instead of x? Yeah, because the y has a multiplication factor in front of it, right? So if I have to solve for y, I'm going to end up having to divide by 4, which is not as friendly as solving for x, because I don't have to divide by anything. It's alone. So it's actually nicer if we continue on this one to solve by choosing y instead of x. So what's another value for y that I could pick? 1. 1? Okay. So I could pick a value for y as 1. So if y is 1, this one requires a little more than the last one, I'm going to have x plus 4 equals 2. I normally would never go up and down, but here we've got x plus 4 equals 2. So what would we do to solve for x? Yeah, we would subtract our 4. So x would be negative 2. Now again, you don't necessarily need to solve that out like I just did. If you can visibly look at it and say, hey, well, what would x have to be to make this work? And I can just see that it's negative 2. That's okay. You could do that because that's what we're looking for is just finding that other value. And we're going to plot them. Now, we do need to be careful. We still are plotting x and then y. So x is 2. So we're going to go over to the right 2. And y is 0, which means we're not going up or down any. So this is actually plotted on the x-axis. The other one is x is negative 2. So we haven't done any negatives yet, but we'll go left 2. And y is, what was it, 1. So we'll go up 1, and we'll end up here. So again, what you need to be marking is at least that you've gone to the left one and two and up one, and that you've gone to the right two. They need to be hashed off like that to make sense of what you've done. And then we're gonna connect these two with a line. All right, that didn't work very well. Let's try it again. That's pretty nice. And arrows on the end. Any questions on either of those? How are 5 and 6 different than the ones we've done before? I only get one variable, right? The other variable is simply not there. Okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit about this from this sort of a graphing points perspective first, and then I'm going to talk to you about it in a little bit different perspective. We can still plot an x and a y. The interesting thing, though, is that the x value is always 2. And the y value can be any number you get to pick. Because no matter what, x is 2. And no matter what, y doesn't make it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the value of x. So you can do 2 and 0. You could do 2 and 5. You could do 2 and whatever you'd like. So when you come down here, no matter what you've picked, we'll pick my 2, 0. 2, 0 would be here. 2, 5 would be up here. What kind of a line am I going to get if I connect those? It's vertical. And no matter what two points you pick, that wasn't good. No matter what two points you pick, that's what's going to happen. All right. So try to be kind about the fact that my vertical line didn't look super vertical. Yours are probably better. Okay, so it's a vertical line. Okay, so the same kind of thing is happening on number six, except that it is going to be horizontal. So no matter what I pick for, y, for x, so I can do x is 0 and I can do x is negative 4 or whatever, I get a y value of 2. So let me plot those points. I have 0, 2, so that's here. I have negative 4, 2 is here. Again, no matter what you plot, you guys already told me and you're exactly right, you get a horizontal line at the height of y equals 2. So 
So I'd like to put a note. I don't think I have it on another screen. I think, a, yeah, I'm going to write it in here for you. So I'd like you to put a note on here to yourself. The note is that all lines that are x equals a number, that's not a hashtag, that's the number sign, x equals a number are vertical lines. And the symmetric note on the other one is that all lines that are y equals a number are horizontal lines. necessarily have to remember that every time because you could always do exactly what we did with that ordered pair thing, right? You could, and you would remind yourself as you're doing it, that, oh yeah, this is one of those vertical lines, or oh yeah, this is those horizontal lines we did before. All right, so some very important features of graphs are their intercepts. We have two different types of intercepts. We have an x-intercept and we have a y-intercept. Your x-intercept is the location where an equation crosses the x-axis. That's why it's called an x-intercept. But in particular, if it crosses the x-axis, then it means that y is 0. That should not say y equals a number. I have no idea why that says y equals a number on your paper. Mark that out. That should say 0. That's definitely a typo. y equals 0. Okay, so make sure yours at the end says this, because that's a typo on your book. Uh, and a y-intercept, then, is the location where an equation crosses the y-axis. And that happens at x equals 0. So we could go back and we could actually look at all of ours. Some of them we plotted them where they were hitting and some of them we didn't. So for example, like on number three, we very clearly plotted the y-intercept because it's one of my points that's actually on there. You can see it for sure. It's at zero, one, right? This is my y-intercept right here. Um, it doesn't actually look like we can, I mean, let me reword that. It looks like the x-intercept is at negative 1. But sometimes our graphs, you know, just sometimes, are not perfectly drawn because we're not perfect when we draw them. So it doesn't always work to just look at a graph and say, hey, for sure I know that this is my x-value or my y-value where it's crossing the x-axis. Sometimes it's clear and sometimes it's not. Now, occasionally they will give you a graph. And if they're giving you a graph, you're allowed to assume that if it looks like it's crossing somewhere that it is, in fact, doing it. Because... That's computer generated. It has a lot more chance, a lot higher chance of being more accurate than when I draw it or you draw it, right? So as we're looking at this one on number seven, we're going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the graph. Here's something that I want you to understand. An x-intercept and a y-intercept is a point. And points are always ordered pairs. So if I ask you on this one, what's the x-intercept, and you say negative 2, then you are not correct, because the x-intercept should be an ordered pair, and an x-value and a y-value. Now, the y-value is not very exciting, but it's part of the location of where something is, right? If I asked you where do you live, and you say on Harrison, Harrison's a really long street, it's not very helpful, right? I need a cross street to give me an idea of where on Harrison you live or whatever it is. What was that, Jasmine? Is your graph on your book different than, our, than this one? Fabulous. Okay. Um, let me redraw what you have in your book because you're right. I don't know why it did that, but that's fine. I can fix it. Wow, not with that. 
That's what yours is, isn't it? Yeah? Okay. So ignore mine. I don't know why they don't match. I copy pasted them, obviously. That didn't work. Um, okay, so this is, this is the one you guys have. Okay, so let's do x-intercept first. It asks us just to find both intercepts and it asks us for x first. So the x-intercept, so the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis and that would be this location, right? Okay, as an ordered pair, because that's how we're always going to write them, what is the x-intercept? Two, zero. Yeah, x is two, y is zero. Now we're going to do the y-intercept. Yeah, it's over here. And it is x is 0, and then y is negative 2. Any questions on that? All right, so we have a couple more questions related specifically to intercepts. Number 8 gives us an equation, 3x minus 2y equals 12, and it asks us to find the x and the y-intercept. Um, doing that with a graph is sort of counterproductive. All right, so we're not asked to draw a graph here, so we don't need to draw a graph to find these. It said over here that if I'm finding the x-intercept, it's when y equals 0. And when I'm finding the y-intercept, it's when x equals 0. So as I'm looking at my question over here, if I want to find my x-intercept, what I will do is let y equal 0. So this would be 3x minus 2 times 0 equals 12. So this part's 0, right? So I really just have 3x equals 12. And what would I do? Divide by the 3, mm-hmm. And what would I get for x? 4. But if I stop here, I've stopped short of actually listing the x-intercept. What's the x-intercept? It's the ordered pair for 0. I know sometimes people think, well, that just sounds really picky. Why can't I just write x equal 4? Well, the problem is x equal 4 is also a line. It's the vertical line at 4. Right? It's ambiguous. But if I list an ordered pair, you know exactly what's going on because there's only one location that that actually corresponds to. All right, let's do y-intercept. So if I'm doing the y-intercept, what would I do? Yeah, I would let x equal 0. So my y-intercept is when x equals 0. So this would be 3 times 0 uh, minus 2 times y equals 12. So again, this piece is now 0. I have negative 2y equals 12. And I would, right, divide by negative 2. So what value do I get? 12 divided by negative 2. Negative 6. And then my ordered pair would be 0, negative 6. Exactly. OK, so let's say we did this problem. We're not asked to do this in this problem, but we're about to be on the next problem. And it was asking us, after I found those ordered pairs, which I just did, to graph them. Could you do that? Absolutely. You've got two, two ordered pairs. You could plot them just like we were doing on the first six problems that we did. And you could connect them with a line, right? Well, that's exactly what you're asked to do on some of your problems given like this, number nine. Now, you'll notice because of the language that they describe, they don't actually list the ordered pairs as ordered pairs, but that's okay. They're not telling you x equals negative 3. They're actually saying the x-intercept is negative 3. There's all this language surrounding that, so that's why they're able to do that in the way that they're structuring their question. But it asks you to graph the line whose x-intercept is negative 3. So I don't have a graph on mine this time, so I'm going to draw it right along with you. So we're going to draw our axes. It says my x-intercept is negative 3. So along the x-axis, I'm supposed to be crossing at negative 3. That's something like that. And then it says my y-intercept is negative 2. So on my y-axis, I'm supposed to be crossing at negative 2. So somewhere like that. And then in order to draw the line, I would connect those two points. 
not with pink. Let's try red. Hold tight, I'm gonna shift my line. That's better. And make the arrows on the end. Any questions on the graphing part we're looking at today? Okay, we will continue our discussion, more graphing things on um, tomorrow, on tomorrow, on Tuesday. Um, but take a look at this homework this evening. Come see me if you have any questions or the Success Center, and we'll start with some questions at the beginning of class next time.